The last time Toyota offered a Land Cruiser in the United States, it was a meticulously crafted but somewhat dated and expensive SUV. Of course, it lived up to its name with plenty of off-road talent, but generally customers with $87,000 to spend wanted something with a little bit more prestige than that Toyota Jelly Bean badge could provide. So when the company announced that the Land Cruiser was coming back to the United States, my interest was piqued, all the more so when those early teaser images revealed that this was going to be a smaller and slightly less expensive SUV than that bygone 200 series. And lo, Toyota didn't disappoint with the 2024 Land Cruiser, a smartly styled SUV with a price that's gonna start in the mid $50,000 range. For more on the 2024 Land Cruiser, be sure to click the link in the description for the full Motor One debut story. You can also catch up with us on all of your favorite social media. That's Facebook, Instagram, Threads, Twitter, and TikTok, and keep up with us there. For now, let's get back to the Cruiser. When the Land Cruiser comes to market, it'll be available in three different trim levels. There'll be the base Land Cruiser 1958, the mid-level and simply named Land Cruiser, and the 5,000 unit Land Cruiser First Edition. All of them have a blocky and upright shape with a nearly flat windshield and squared off side windows, giving you excellent off-road visibility. And speaking of off-roading, this new Land Cruiser is 4.4 inches narrower and two inches shorter from bumper to bumper than that 200 series, giving it better off-road maneuverability. As you can see, the Land Cruiser borrows a lot from the Lexus GX from this side view, and that's because these vehicles share a platform and body shell. That's the most obvious when you look at the upkicked belt line, but you also get the same big squared off mirrors and flared front and rear fenders as you'd find on the Lexus. However, the Toyota does have a unique personality all its own, thanks to this wrap over hood and the revised front and rear fascias. Moving around the back, you can clearly tell that this is a very different vehicle from the Lexus GX by these big chunky taillights on each corner of the rear of the car. In fact, if you squint a little bit, I kind of think that they look a little bit like the taillights that you'd find on a 55 series or an 80 series Land Cruiser, which ties in perfectly with this car's slightly retro persona. The front end, for example, has those squared off rectangular headlights that to my mind look just like the ones on an FJ62. Toyota also gives you a few ways to access your cargo from back here, including a separate opening hatch glass if you just need to throw something in and you don't want stuff rolling out, or the fully power operated lift gate that gives you full access to your cargo area. Now, as you can see, there is a rather unfortunate lift over right here, but at least you get a little bit of storage and there's a full size spare underneath the car for when you have an off-road incident and need to change your wheel out on the trail. The base model of the Land Cruiser lineup is this 1958 edition. The most obvious change that you can plainly see are these round headlights, as well as a very plastic heavy front fascia that might be appealing if you're the type to go off road and scrape things up and want something that's a little bit more easily replaceable than the body color units on the Land Cruiser and the Land Cruiser First Edition. Now, if you are the off-roading type, your first stop should absolutely be the tire shop in favor of the biggest size that you can fit without lifting this thing up. Doing that would improve the stance immensely because as it sits right now, it kind of looks like it's riding on roller skate wheels. Now, even though it's not gonna be as expensive as the model that came before it, the new Land Cruiser still feels very well crafted inside. Plastics are very impressive. Even the hard ones get kind of a soft rubbery feeling coating so that they don't ever feel too cheap or too unyielding. The base trim gets heated fabric seats with a heated steering wheel, while every other trim is gonna get heated and ventilated Softex imitation leather or genuine leather, depending on the trim level and package you choose. Every Land Cruiser from the base model on up is pretty comprehensively equipped with driver assist features like adaptive cruise control, automatic emergency braking, lane departure prevention and lane centering, and blind spot monitoring coming standard. It also gets a bunch of off-road features like downhill assist control and low speed crawl control, as well as multi-terrain select to help you get over any kind of obstacle. The new Land Cruiser also comes with the latest Toyota infotainment system. We've covered this system in detail before, and it looks just as good here as it does anywhere else. The Land Cruiser will only be available as a five seat version. There will not be a third row available. Luckily, that second row seat is very spacious with plenty of headroom thanks to the upright roof line and an adjustable rear seat back to help you dial in your comfort exactly how you want it. Under the hood is a 2.4 liter turbocharged and hybridized inline four good for 326 horsepower and 465 pound-feet. Best of all, a lot of that grunt is gonna be available from a low RPM, thanks to the electric motor's instantaneous torque. Now for comparison, the Lexus GX with its twin turbocharged V6 does have a little bit more power, 349 and 479, 
but those numbers aren't that big of a difference considering that this is going to be probably a little bit lighter thanks to its five seat only configuration. The Lexus will be available with a third row. As on every Land Cruiser before it, this new one gets full time four wheel drive with a two speed high and low transfer case. It also gets a standard locking rear differential as well as an automatic limited slip center differential to give you plenty of traction when the going gets rough. Underneath the Land Cruiser, there's a double wishbone front suspension to give you decent on-road handling, as well as a multi-link solid rear axle for maximum off-road articulation. You also get 8.7 inches of ground clearance, as well as an impressive 31 degree approach angle, joining an adequate 22 degree departure angle and 25 degree breakover measurement. And crucially for an off-roader, you get a nice chunky skid plate that runs from the front bumper to the transmission, and everything else is tucked up decently well within the frame rails to ensure that you don't snag a rock when you're out there tackling tough obstacles. While we don't have complete pricing information just yet, Toyota has committed to a mid $50,000 starting price for the base Land Cruiser 1958, getting you round LED headlights, a plastic heavy face, and a fabric trimmed interior with heated front seats. Opt for this mid-level Land Cruiser model and you get a soft tex interior with heated and ventilated front seats, a sway bar disconnect for the front wheels for greater articulation, and these square headlights to give it that 80s retro vibe. Opt for the 5,000 unit Land Cruiser First Edition and you get the same round headlights as the base model but with a few up-level styling tweaks as well as a roof rack and some added body armor for off-road protection. Also, if you go for either the middle or the upper trims, you get a 12.3 inch touchscreen instead of the base model's eight inch unit. Now, in spite of the fact that I'll probably never be able to afford one, I actually really liked that old 200 series Land Cruiser. I loved the interior and how premium and upscale it felt without it necessarily being a luxury car. But at the same time, and as a current Land Cruiser owner myself, I have an 80 series, I'm so glad that Toyota is going a little bit back to basics with the new Land Cruiser. The more maneuverable size is a plus, and no one can say no to its lower starting price. With competitors in the market like the four-door Jeep Wrangler and Ford Bronco, as well as a very sparsely equipped version of the Land Rover Defender 110, the Land Cruiser definitely has an uphill battle. But with its sterling brand cachet for off-road capability and its newly approachable size and price, I definitely think it has the makings to be a standout success. Thanks for watching.